I'm always on the lookout for new and interesting information when it comes to the Battlefield series, and today we have plenty of that. Lots to sink your teeth into today. It'd be awesome to get your comments down below on some of these topics. Let me know what you're interested in most. There's a lot in this video today. First up, a new custom game has made its way to Battlefield 1. This one replaces Fog of War, and it's called Line of Sight. Now this is a take on the Rush game mode, and only on the map Suez, where Medic and Scout are the only two classes available. Double bullet damage, the Scouts are more lethal than ever, and as a natural counter to this, Medics will need to make good use of their gadgets to balance out the teams. Now, I haven't played this yet, but when you tell me the bullet damage has been doubled and there are snipers involved, I'm not really sure how much fun that's going to be. I'll bring you a video soon on the new mode, I'll do a live commentary and stuff so you can get a feel for it, but I will say this about the custom games. They are a good source of change for the Battlefield 1 gameplay cycle, and they're kind of filling in a little bit of that content gap that some people think is present in Battlefield 1, including myself. I do think there could be a little bit more out there for us to use at the moment. Having the rules change, fundamentally having to play a different way, makes me feel like I am playing something completely new, even though it's exactly the same game underneath. Now I'm not sure on the rules in line of sight, I will have to give it a try, but still, it's something new to have a go at. If you want to give it a go, go to the multiplayer menu, then click custom games at the end, and it will be an option there for you to give it a go. Next up is server locations, and I think this bit of news will make people fairly happy. Now large sections of the world have suffered since the launch of Battlefield 1, with a lack of local servers hosted in their area by EA and DICE, and that's led them to joining out of region servers, playing games with like two to 300 ping, and overall just having a rubbish experience with the game, and that's not good news for anybody, because having people with two and 300 ping on your server is going to negatively affect your game as much as it's negatively affecting theirs. Today, however, DICE have released information that support for regional servers in South Africa, the Middle East, and Hong Kong will be going live in early 2017. That's good news for those people in those areas who were trying to play Battlefield 1 on their closest server. I mean, in South Africa, if you wanted to play on a European server, that's a really long distance for those signals to be sent, so not a good experience there, but support is coming now. That's not an exact date, early 2017. That could be anywhere from January the 1st to March the 31st, which is still a fairly big chunk of time. I really hope DICE have got priorities to get this in place in early January, so people in those areas can play Battlefield 1 on a server that's close to them, so they can have a properly good experience with other people in that area and get some good games in, probably for the first time since the game's released. It is good to see DICE improving the online service, and I can understand why the decision was taken to not have those regions set up for the launch of the game, but now all of those players in those outlying areas will soon be able to join the same experiences online as those in other territories already have. Now into some of the more meaty stuff in this video, some of the proper new information. The next Battlefield game is likely to come in 2018. At an investor meeting in Europe, EA CFO Blake Jorgensen confirmed we won't have another Battlefield for a couple of years. Now that makes total sense, considering previous games like Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 were two years apart. This gives players enough time to really appreciate the game before another one comes onto the scene. Jorgensen also stated that EA are looking into more ways of how the Battlefield games can be extended in terms of their engagement, how people spend their time playing, and what more can be done to extend that playtime. We're looking at all of our games and asking, how might we provide additional opportunities for the player to engage? The player wants to engage deeply in the game. He goes on to say that the models used by FIFA and Madden, the ultimate team system, have heavily increased engagement with those games, and translating something like that in some form 
into a Battlefield game makes sense. And he says it's a great challenge and an exciting one. Now, from my point of view, I think the Battlefield series would do well to find another way of increasing engagement. And I think there is one system already that's currently trying to go along that path. And that is the Battle Pack system. That's one way that DICE and EA are trying to increase engagement. But having them drop randomly is almost counterproductive to that increased engagement. There's no clear path set out for a player to know how to achieve these extra items. They are just completely random. This new variation of the system that they've gone for with Battlefield 1, sure, might increase the player engagement a little bit at the start of the game, but moving forwards and going into the extended life cycle of Battlefield 1, how is that really going to sit with players? Now, I'm not so sure because already people are very heavily critical of the battle pack system in Battlefield 1, with most people saying it's just simply not fair. And now, you can buy battle packs for real money as well. People don't really care that much about it anymore, and it's kind of becoming a little bit of a joke. Improving something like this, however, could be very valuable to the Battlefield franchise, and making it seem worth achieving is something I think needs to be worked on. I think a good start for the battle pack system would be rather than having it as a random drop at the end of the game, it be included back into the progression system as it was in Battlefield 4 and still having the ability to get a random drop at the end of the game. That random drop then becomes a surprise, but you always know you're going to get a few battle packs by continuing to rank up in the game. That way players know there is an actual path on how to achieve these things, but you still get a nice surprise once in a while when you get one randomly at the end of the match. Moving back to Blake Jorgensen though, he also confirmed another reason why we won't be getting a Battlefield game in 2017, and that's because Star Wars Battlefront 2 is coming in 2017, and of course DICE are the same developers, so they're making that one instead. Apparently that game, which technically hasn't been announced yet, will be much bigger than the original and it will use content from the newer movies, which of course a lot of younger gamers will have seen and a lot of people who didn't watch the original Star Wars films will likely have watched maybe the two or three that have come out by the time this game comes out and apparently that means a lot more people are going to buy the game, according to EA's analysts. The next news piece Competitive Battlefield. Now, ever since Battlefield 3 rose to success in 2011, EA and DICE, I think, have recognised the appeal of having some sort of competitive side to the franchise. Battlefield 4 introduced the Diffuse mode, which was okay, but it lacked any sort of post-launch support, and Domination ended up becoming the main mode. Now, Visceral included two 5v5 modes in Battlefield Hardline, but no competitive matchmaker to help formalise those games. Or at least they didn't have one at launch, and that meant by the time they did release one in the third DLC, which you had to pay for, those modes essentially became wasted efforts. There was no way to formalise the game modes. It seems, however, with EA's recent move into the competitive scene, with a new team actually dedicated to it, they're starting to think about bringing that into the Battlefield franchise. EA's Peter Moore, Chief Competition Officer, I mean, what a title that is, spoke recently at the tech conference in Arizona, and he had this to say. We've watched this with great interest for the last couple of years, and decided in the last six months that the time is right to start to invest in this. And not only in our licensed properties, but you'll even see us in calendar year 2017 fully engaged with our Battlefield franchise, a wholly owned IP, and start building our competitive game modes as part of that franchise. Interesting stuff here, a confirmation that at some point in the next 12 months, we'll start to see something competitive emerge for Battlefield. Now, I'm not really sure how that can really come about, considering Battlefield 1 doesn't seem to have any leans towards competitive play unless they were to adapt some of the core values of the Battlefield franchise and pull them in another direction. More carried on to say this. There are microtransaction opportunities in Battlefield called Battle Packs that allow you to progress your way through the game. We've also seen, in particular, with great admiration for what Counter-Strike has been able to do 
and to their credit, and the engagement levels with that are phenomenal. We'll simply sell more copies of Battlefield with the fact that there are competitive types of gaming mode built into that, that allow people to compete. Very confident words overall there from EA saying that they would sell more copies of Battlefield if there was a competitive type of gaming built into it. Now, at the moment, I'm not sure I agree with that statement, simply because the audience for a Battlefield game is fairly casual. I don't know if there's going to be an instant switch over to the competitive side. I don't really know if the audience that you have right now for Battlefield would really move in that direction. I think you might have to create a separate environment and then certain people would play it, but I think always Battlefield is going to be a casual game, but we'll have to wait and see. Seems like 2017 is going to be a very exciting time for the future of Battlefield in a competitive scene. So, lots of Battlefield information there. I've linked the different articles down in the description if you want to go and read them in full. It'd be great as well to get your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you're interested in competitive Battlefield, if you've tried out the new custom game, or if you're now just celebrating that DICE have added servers for your region. Let me know down below. I'm always there trying to read as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.